Welcome back to Leading Our Own Way and welcome to the final part of our series with Patrick Manifold. Yesterday, we explored the impact of perception during his basketball career. We've touched on, touched on many topics in that episode. So if you missed part one to four, please go back to it. But today, Patrick shares his heartwarming insights about retiring from the game of basketball. The moment he found out about his wife was pregnant. Um, they relocated to Nova Scotia, you know, facing initially facing some struggles and fears, but his unwavering mindset propelled him forward in chasing his business dreams. Now, there's a show from England that he references, and it was hilarious because there's a character in it called uh, Mitchell, uh, Phil Mitchell, and he's got loads of businesses, and he kind of admired him for that. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Uh, but Patrick's story is a powerful testament to dedication, not only to, find, to financial success, but also to showing gratitude and striving to provide the best for his family. We also delve into his books, discussing their themes and insights. Make sure to grab copies of the ones that resonate with you. Uh, they're all in the show notes, so please check them out. But join us for his inspiring conclusion as we celebrate Patrick's Manifold's journey and the lessons he's learned along the way. Tomorrow, Monday, super excited. Make sure you come back for this week because in five-part series with Jess Ward, we discuss her journey. Incredible. It is the debut episode of Leading Our Own Way, the wife of Mr. Jake Ward. So please, please check it out. Um, it's inspiring. Go back to listen to Jake, but tune in tomorrow for uh, Jess ward um it's touching and you'll get a lot from it but first before we go to jess please enjoy patrick's and we'll see you soon but i knew there was always going to be something after so i knew i was always going to be a businessman like that was I, and you might actually get this reference no one here gets it but i used to look up to phil mitchell on eastenders because he'd have a pub <laughs> and he'd have a cafe and he'd have this and he'd have that and he's like a wheeler dealer and i was like yeah I'm, one day i'm gonna own a barbershop or i'm gonna own some kind of part like pub like the queen vic or whatever so i always knew i was going to be an entrepreneur i didn't necessarily know how or when or why but i in my mind i was already looking into like leadership and business and things like that and then when i when i we found out after being in italy oh, we loved italy my wife came with me to all of those countries around the world and we just explored throughout my time which was amazing and then we went to england and we found out about sophia and i retired like that like literally within a minute of finding out about it, i retired but everyone said i was crazy because i was like i was traveling the world the teams was playing for my flights and my living and everything was paid for and i was signing autographs and taking selfies and it was like an amazing thing and i was in sticker albums for kids like it was all these cool things but i was totally okay with it because i i knew i didn't want to be away from my family i knew i didn't want my children to grow up and me see them three months out of the year like that couldn't have been any further from who I was as a, as a man at that point. So I just retired instantly, moved to Nova Scotia, which is where we are now, and started my first business, which is Nova Social, like three weeks after. And I was telling this story the other day because when I came here to this country, I didn't know a single soul. I didn't know anybody. I didn't have any contacts. I didn't have any friends. I didn't have anything like that. I didn't have any qualifications. I didn't have any money. After we bought our three and a half thousand dollar Hyundai Tucson, which was like bogey green, which we were proud of at the time, it was our first car. I had fifteen hundred dollars, and I was living in my now wife's parents' house, and basically like sleeping in their spare bedroom. And I had a pregnant wife or a pregnant girlfriend or fiance at the time, and I didn't have anything. I didn't have a job. Didn't have a, a an even idea about what I was going to do. That's a pretty scary time. But mm. the funny thing was, at no point did I think, I'm not going to be able to figure this out. Like, yes, I was scared. I'm not going to lie. There was a pretty daunting experience to be in that position with no money, no prospects, no hope. Mm. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to figure this out. And now that turned that $1,500 into a much bigger sum. Uh, and I have a, like a wonderful life. Like I have a beautiful studio, which I'm in today my offices and I have a bunch of different houses and my like a family home that I love driving one of the car of my dreams which I always wanted since I was a kid what and is it's it? just Tell like us what it is it's a it's a Jeep Grand Cherokee L it's like the three tier version of the Grand Cherokee and I I fortunately bought my wife a brand new vehicle last year so we're both driving around in like brand new vehicles and it wasn't nice. it was only 5 years ago that we had to scrape all of our money together to buy a 2007 like you know 12 year old car and i was like i'm so excited because if i can start with nothing and build what i've built in the last five years what the hell am i going to be able to do in the next five years with all of this behind me yeah. right so i'm super excited and 
grateful at the same time. Like I've been blessed with, I don't know. I, I don't know what the thing I've been blessed with, but whatever it is, I'm grateful for it. Like, yeah. I, it's a, I don't know if it's a work ethic. I don't know if it's a vision, it's self-belief, whatever the case may be, but it's all of them, man. Yeah. I'm just so grateful. It really is. It's all of them. And, uh, I love that story and um, what a nice way to, to, to close this down. But before we, before we do, I want to, I just want to run through your books real quick. Cause I think it's important. And I will put all this in the show notes for everybody who wants to connect with Patrick and whoever wants to buy, purchase his books. Um, but let's, let's go through them. Cause I've got the li list of titles here, um, but just a, a quick rundown. If you, if you will, if that's okay with you, Patrick, real quick. Cause sure. I know time is going away, but we've got, Hope and happiness. Quick rundown about hope and happiness, real quick. If you hope and happiness, up. I actually wrote every single day for a year mm -hmm. while I was living in Italy, or close yep. to a year. And basically, it is my just a bunch of random thoughts that I've now whittled down into. I think the book is like three hundred pages, but each one is like an individual thought about something that hopefully is helpful to other people. Uh, and that you started out as Instagram posts and now it turned into a book. But it's something I am proud of. It's something that is different than the rest of my books because it's like. There's no chapters. It's just a series of thoughts, like inspirational thoughts uh -huh. and motivation and stuff like that. So it's something you can pick up and put down and hopefully it inspires you, you know, when you kind of need it. Uh, so yeah, that's hope and happiness. Nice. Uh, next one, change your life. Change your life. The fir very first book I wrote, change your life, learn the secrets of self-discipline. I wrote it in about 45 days in 2013 in the gap between when basketball finished and when I graduated, which I think was like a two and a half month gap, maybe, where okay. I didn't have basketball, so I had a bit more time. And it was just a challenge. Like, it, I, I guess I wanted to metaphorically give my English teacher the finger by writing. Yeah, I was going to say, was there anything <laughs> about that? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, was, it was part of it. It was. And I, I thought that it would be help people, yes, but it also make my family proud, number two. Um, and yeah, I'm still proud of that book. It's the least sexy. Like, if I'd have known now what I know, I would never have called it. Uh, about talk about book about self discipline because it's like the least sexiest topic in the world. Who wants to learn about self discipline? Nobody. But but it is the single like if you can discipline yourself to do hard things, if you can get yourself to do something that you don't really want to do now, but you know it will benefit you in the future. Oh my goodness, you become so powerful. So yes, I'm. Like I know, I understand most people don't want to read that book because it's about self-discipline, but it's probably my best book as far as it's going to get you to kind of really get rid of results in your life. Are you saying that's the one that doesn't get sold as much as the rest? Or it, I, I actually don't look at the things. I have the okay. all of my books are set up to an account where the money goes into account for my doors, which is actually in the UK, which I don't mm. even have the app for anymore. So I don't even like I said, I don't want to say I don't care. But something like that. Like yeah, I know, I know that it makes decent money in the, in the background, and it's just mm -hmm. going to kind of continue to pile up for my kids. Yeah. But yeah, I don't I don't check the numbers because if I did that, then it would feel like it was like transactional, like I'm only doing it to make yeah. money. And that's the the books and all that kind of stuff. That's not really why I do it. Like I do it to help people, and mm -hmm. money is obviously a nice thing, and we need it to make the world go around. But I'm making money in other areas of my life, yeah. and that's just not the place that I'm going for. Sure. No, I can relate to that. I don't, I don't know what that's making. Um, I mean, obviously mine's not selling like yours, but it, for me, if one person can get something from that, who are struggling in the workplace, whether 100%. they're being bullied, I'm totally, totally cool with that. hundred percent. Yeah. So I have the same mindset as you. Um, I don't have money making anywhere else yet. <laughs> I'm still <laughs> teaching, but, um, <laughs> that counts. yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 Um, new year, better you, which you can see behind. Oh, actually, before I do move on, um, Patrick did say that, challenge your life is his best book so go out there get that one it's not my best book as far as my best written book it's probably got okay. the most typos out of all the books because it was so long ago that i wrote it so if uh. you can get past that but the actual like thesis about like getting yourself to do hard stuff everyone should read a condensed version of that for sure okay yeah good all right new year better you i know we've touched on that briefly but new year better you yeah it's basically like a five-step plan to like figure out your life and where you want to where you are now where you want to be that exercise i talked about earlier that's one of the exercises in that book yeah it's five steps to basically change your life uh, and i love that you start with um and i would have brought it up if you didn't <laughs> no offense but i love that you start off with relationships because for me connection and relationship has to be number one not that we all get it right i i'm getting I, I get it wrong all the time but it yeah it has to be 
connection and relationships. So I'm so glad that you started with that one first. <laughs> Not it's, that you need my point of view on that, but no, I love that you did. I, I believe that. And I like we had, I had a conversation with my wife around the new year because my wife is very very different to me like she isn't a goal setter she isn't mm. super ambitious she's not like that which is perfect like yin and yang to me because if she was like me we'd be screwed <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no one would be looking after the kids like it would be it would be a problem see each other <laughs> exactly but she is like she's amazing she's perfect and i'm so grateful for her but i said to her we had a conversation not long ago like around new year and i said i want you to write down everything that would make your life better everything that you've that you want like unfortunately slash unfortunately i've given her everything that she asked for so that she's not like super like she doesn't there's not that i said if it, what about in a year or so i buy you another car she said i don't really care like i love my car like i don't want anything else so she's not quite like in that area like i am but one of the things she had was she said Do you know what like i don't really i don't really love doing all the like the laundry and stuff and i don't really love the cooking part of it so i said okay great that's something that we can maybe work on. What, what are our options? She said, well, I don't know. And I said, what, what if we got a nanny? Someone to come in like four days a week and they cook dinner, they did the washing, they did the things that you don't like. And then the, during that time period, you could either come and see me at the office, you could take the kids somewhere or you could do stuff or whatever. So now mm-hmm. we're mapping out, trying to figure out how we can find someone who's willing to come mm-hmm. to our house four hours a day, five or six days a week and take care of those things. Because for someone, someone else loves cooking. Someone else loves cleaning. Like someone else is passionate about that. And she's not. So I believe it's my duty to not only help myself, but help her to create a life that she loves. Right? And maybe she does, she's, not, she's not the type of person, she's a very unselfish person, whereas I'm quite a selfish person naturally. So I'm trying to be selfish for her by saying, what could we do? Like, what could make you happy? What could we, like, is it a new house? Is it whatever she wants, basically? I'm trying to be that for her. So yes, relationships and being open and honest, because I'm saying, look, this is what I need. I'm very upfront about everything that I need, everything that I want. I'm super upfront about it. And she's not necessarily like that. So we have a little bit of a kind of back and forth in those areas. But I think that honesty is the absolute the best way forward. And if you, if you don't have a happy home life with your relationship with your spouse, your wife, your husband, whatever the case may be, the rest of the stuff doesn't matter, right? You could, I could be the richest, happiest, healthiest person in the world but then if I went home, my kids hated me, my wife hated me, I wouldn't have a good life, right? So it, it is, like you said, I don't believe in balance per se, but I do believe that in these core areas, you do have to have health in those four yeah. five areas. Yeah, lovely, love it. Happy today? Happy today. was. It was almost like a, when I wrote that, it was, I don't want to say a joke, it wasn't a joke, but it was literally like, I was getting so pissed off with my Instagram. Like I used to get like hundreds of comments a day and it was all these people saying they couldn't find happiness. And I wrote that book. It's, I think it's called, I can't even remember. 50 Ways to Find Happiness Every Day, right? And mm. it, that, that subtitle changes why I don't remember it. But basically, I was like, you could do this. You could put a song on and dance around your house. You could make love to your spouse. You could go out and have some drinks with your friends. You could go out and go for a run. Like there's so many easy ways to find happiness just because you're avoiding them doesn't mean that you have the right to be unhappy so basically i wrote Mm. that book as a way to like you're not allowed unless you are clinically depressed and you have something like biochemistry wrong in your mind where you're predispositioned to suffer from that and i have empathy for that if you're just unhappy because i was unhappy i didn't have a mental disorder i was just i had a shitty life basically if you read that book you got no excuse and i wanted to just give it to I, i think i gave that away for free for a long time anyone that wants that book email me and i will send you an ebook copy of that book for free because all i want you to do is say hey i don't know how to find happiness and maybe you haven't figured it out there's 50 yeah. quick ways that you can find happiness in your life love it yeah i don't want no offense i don't want the ebook i want to put it on my display so okay well it's actually got it has an updated cover this year my designer cool. made a new cover for it so oh, nice. you give me your address and i'll send you one. Oh no i'll i'll, I'll put i want to put all your books on here definitely You're the man I appreciate yeah, it. I definitely do. And the, the doctor that I interviewed a few weeks ago, this, he's got six books that I want to purchase here. Wow. I just have to wait for my interest rates to go down on my mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> That's ridiculous over here. Don't know how it's affecting you, but it's crazy over here. Um, Problem. Be, be All You Can Be. Be All You Can Be. That's actually a kid's book. It's, it's my nephew, Oliver, who mm. I adore. I adore all my nieces and nephews. But Oliver one day said, hey, Uncle Paddy, how come you only write books for big people? <laughs> and he was like four at the time. Love and it. I was like, 
Hmm, okay. And mm-hmm. that basically started the idea of me writing a personal development book aimed at kids between the ages of like seven and 15, 16 type of thing. So it's yeah. basically all my ideas about how to be happy, how to deal with bullying, how to deal with all these different things that kids go through. And that's yeah, basically what it is. Actually, there's a, for teachers, there's a thing that goes with it. It's like a, a like a goal setting thing, a like 30 day challenge. And yeah. then the parents and teachers can use that to kind of teach their kids different, like important life lessons, I believe. So oh, I that, that goes with it too. And I'm actually really proud of that. And actually I started a book tour with that when I was in the UK, uh, but then I left uh, and came here and I haven't really picked it up again. I was, I was in 10 schools in Nova Scotia to talk and then something called COVID happened and like oh, yeah. couldn't speak to big that. groups of uh, kids or something. So anyway, <laughs> some, something like that. Uh, and then, yeah, now I'm actually in the process of picking it back up and trying to get it into as many kids' hands as possible. Yeah, I love that. Oh, oh, I'd be very interested in that one too, right down my alley. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> yeah, and exactly. you did. Yeah, no, it definitely is. You did a a ninety day um, productivity journal called Action This Day as well. Action This Day. Action This Day is actually a term that Winston Churchill used to have. He used to every single day, he's like. Mm-hmm write down his goals or whatever for what he had to do that day and in big red letters he'd write action this day which is where the inspiration for the title came from but basically i would always every single day i would write down all of my goals for the things i want to do prioritize them in order and then i'd have to write the date and i'd have to write like what i'm grateful for and blah blah, blah. so it basically turned out like it started as something that i made for me so that i didn't have to write all the headings and that i could just jump straight into the tasks and then the three grateful and then the notes and then I added a quote at the bottom of it. And basically, it's like a 90-day workbook. And it sounds really easy, but it's not easy at all to do it for 90 days straight. And I've failed multiple times myself, many, many times myself. Mm-hmm. But what I do is I, I promise myself something that if I do the whole 90 days, I'll buy myself whatever I want. So I love watches, like all different kind of like automatic watches. I love colognes, like different fragrances and things like that. So I'll buy myself something like that. So if I do 90 days, I'll buy myself a watch or I'll buy myself a cologne or I'll go out to dinner somewhere or whatever, buy an expensive bottle of whiskey or something like that as a reward for me being disciplined for that time period. And basically it's it's like a workbook that anyone can use. I think it's like 10 bucks. It's like nothing. Yeah, I love that. That's amazing. Yeah, didn't know about that one, but have I missed anything else off in terms of books? I feel like I did, I did a little bit of further research and they're the ones I found. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. I've had a few more, but, but not really ones I'd talk about, like stuff like about basketball and stuff like that. But no, mm. those are my, my core kind of four up yeah. there and then the action this day. Um, and yeah, I'm proud of it. I'm proud of them being out in the world. And we did a book signing. The Hope and Happiness was my, is my latest book. And we brought it out maybe a month or two ago on my birthday, October 26th. Yeah. And brought it out and we did a big launch and my goal was for it to become a best-selling book on amazon because i that was a goal i always had like i wanted to be able to read somewhere once as patrick manifold best-selling author i just thought that sounded cool and i was like i really want to go for it you did and it. i did it and i was the number one in three different categories so like we we did it even bigger than what we anticipated and that was the last time that i was like genuinely uh genuinely proud of proud of something that i did and I'm proud yeah, of that book amazing. because I, I think that anyone that reads it is going to, you're definitely going to have, you're going to leave it. When you put it down at the end, you're going to have more hope for your life. And I think you'll be happier too. So I'm proud of it. What were the three categories if I can ask? Three categories of what? Oh, uh, uh, one was quotations because there's a bunch of quotes from me in the book. Yeah. One of them was, um, I think it was like something about like Canadian books by Canadian authors or something like that, like or come from that area. Yeah, and the third one I can't remember. It was something like, uh, it, I think it was in self development, personal development, and then happiness was uh, something like that, like one of the sub quotes yeah. of that. So yeah, amazing. Yeah. I I remember seeing it on social media. And I just loved it. I think that's when I messaged you and went, "I got it." But mine was my mine was free Kindle for the for the weekend. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah well anyway. the good thing is the good thing is about australia like it probably costs like a thousand bucks to send something from canada to australia but the good thing is you can i need to see if i can find a way to send it from from australia to you i'll, I'll look into it and see what i can do because yours will be on amazon here yeah it'll just it'll just get printed in sydney i think right yeah 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 so it's pretty easy to get I've, I've looked on i have looked on the amazon that's how i got that's how i got better uh, new year oh, better year perfect yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course. I, I, I want them all. I want to support 
as much as I possibly can as well along your journey. I th- and, 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 you know, even you appearing on Leading Our Own Way, you're supporting me on my journey by allowing me to share your vulnerability and teach people um, the you know coming from the darkness to the light and people can achieve and your story is unique in its own in its own way and mate i just appreciate you coming on on here uh, before we do wrap it up real quick what's the future for patrick manifold though i i do know uh, but i don't <laughs> <laughs> i have a like a, a vision for my life of where i'm going to be in like 25 years ish and yeah. the next 25 years between now and then is just me going to be being the best entrepreneur I can be and Mm -hmm. continuing to provide value in the world, continuing to grow the legacy that I want to pass down to my kids and my great grandkids and all the way down the line. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to keep trying to help people. Like that's genuinely like, that's my passion. That's the thing that I do that I don't necessarily like, I have a team, like a production team, which allows me to create really nice looking things, which for me, that's the way, that I like to do it. Like I could very well do it in a cell phone in the, in the Jeep and like not care. But for me, I like taking pride in it. Like we do filmmaking, we create documentaries. Here. So if we have the ability to use all these, you know, cameras and this special software and stuff that we use, yeah. then I, that's the way I like to do it. It takes longer and it's harder, but I take more pride in it if that's the case. So I'm yeah. going to continue to do more stuff in this realm. I'll write more books. I'll speak on more stages. I'll make thousands of Instagram posts and all those kind of things. I'll continue to do everything I can to help as many people as I can. And at the same time, I'm going to try to keep growing, trying to become better all the time, Mm -hmm. trying to keep that kind of lion inside me that allows me to, you know, yell at myself every now and again, say, Hey, you're capable of more. Let's go. People are watching. They need inspiration. Let's go. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to see whatever that, whatever happens and probably a few more kids too. Well, I'm excited, mate. And um, yeah, no, I'm definitely excited about your journey. I've enjoyed watching your journey over the last few years and uh, I'll continue to learn from you and uh, continue to enjoy getting more books in and watching those. You you, you, you're, you are an inspiration to me because I do, I, I'm not at that point yet where I can make all of those things that you do on social media, the way you get out of the car. I, I absolutely love it. And because I've seen you and I've met you and I know you, uh, uh, that what that's what makes it possible for me, right. if you know what I mean. When you you know when you see somebody that you you don't know doing it, you're like, right. I could never do that. And I but promise, I know mate, you. So anything I know that I, I know is your, is yours. You just ask. You hit me a DM on Instagram or whatever. How'd you do that? I promise you, I'll tell you everything. Leave nothing out. So well, I appreciate and, that. And, and none of it is. Um, I say none of it's hard. Everything is accessible, right? Yeah. It's just sometimes, like like you said, like. When it's someone close to you and you you know that's just like a regular person, you're like, holy shit, maybe I can do that thing. When it's yeah. The Rock and he does it and you're like, yeah, I don't know if I could do what he does, but I guarantee you, you can. Yeah. Yeah. Mate, let's um, let's stop there then. I absolutely love it. Thank you so thank much. You. For... I want to say thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to you. I've really enjoyed this conversation. I thank so. you to everybody that watched, you know, on your kind of audience. Mm-hmm. Uh, and. I hope that people continue to support you because I think that what you're doing is, is the right thing. And I think that if you have the tenacity, which I believe that you do, and the potential that I know that you have, you're going to take this from strength to strength to strength. Uh, and I'm excited to watch your journey uh, and see you lead in your community and continue to be inspired by you too. I can't end better than that, Patrick. I really can't. Thank <laughs> you. That, that means a lot. It really, really does. And um, I hope I can I can continue my journey. I, I, I'm certainly going to try. And um, I, I know people will get a lot from your episode today. Uh, you speak of many. You bring a lot of wisdom to your words. You articulate it beautifully. And something, again, I want to develop on. And, uh, yeah, I just absolutely love it. Well, thank you. Appreciate to it, what, Yeah, no, mate, I appreciate it. Well, you know what? Let's end it there because you ended it beautifully i could never top that um <laughs> thank you for watching uh, leading our own way fans um i hope you could tune in next week for the next guest and uh, i hope everyone has a fantastic week take care everybody from patrick and i see ya take care all the best thanks for listening and watching leading our own way so we can stay together forever and share more incredible journeys please subscribe to the channel that way you won't miss next week's episode and what that amazing guest has to offer to the world Please support Leading Our Own Way and we'll get you on next week's episode.